So our next speaker is Tessa Cacciatolo, who's a Wellcome Trust Clinical Research Fellow, uh, who's working at the Wellcome Trust MRC Institute of Metabolic Science in Cambridge. And her talk is about rare variants in steroid receptor coactivator 1 associated with severe obesity. Tessa, thank you. Hey, thank you very much for this opportunity to talk about my work focusing on mechanisms which are disrupted in people with severe obesity. And I have been focusing specifically on rare variants in steroid receptor coactivator 1 or SRC1. Okay, so by background, we are interested in the homeostatic mechanisms regulating weight. And we have shown that the hormone leptin is secreted from adipocytes and acts on the hypothalamus to regulate food intake. And in fact, Rare variants and homozygous variants in the leptin gene cause severe childhood obesity, which is fully treated with recombinant leptin. So how does leptin work? Well, it binds um, to its receptor on the surface of neurons, leading to phosphorylation of STAT3, which then moves into the nucleus to activate POMC expression. And this, in turn, reduces, reduces food intake. Okay, so more recently, by sequencing 2,500 children with severe obesity, we identified 15 rare heterozygous variants in a gene called SRC1. And we know that the knockout mouse is obese, um, suggesting that this could be a good biological candidate for a role in regulation of weight. At the molecular level, SRC1 interacts with nuclear hormones and, and other transcription factors to activate expression of target genes. And we showed that SRC1 interacts with STAT3 to mediate the leptin-induced expression of POMC. So we hypothesized that rare variants may disrupt this mechanism to cause weight gain. To test this hypothesis, we generated a mouse with a targeted deletion of SRC1 in POMC neurons, and we showed that this mouse gained weight on a high-fat diet, that this was due to increased food intake. Then we injected controls with intraperitoneal leptin, and within one hour there was an acute anorectic effect, which was not seen in controls, suggesting that SRC1 is important for the acute signal of leptin. We then went on to test the effect of the variants in cells, and using co-immunoprecipitation, we showed that SRC1, wild-type SRC1, interacts with STAT3, and this effect was impaired in six out of the seven variants tested. We moved to a reporter assay of STAT3 activity and showed that all the variants impaired activity of STAT3, and in further assays showed that this was in a dominant negative manner. We then generated a reporter of POMC activity, and we showed that all the variants found in cases had reduced POMC activation, whereas the four variants we found in controls were wild-type-like. But these are rare variants, and proving causality can be quite challenging. So we generated a knock-in mouse model of SRC1 with the L1376P human variant. And indeed, these mice gained weight on a high-fat diet. This was due to an increase in adiposity. They had an increase in food intake and also a reduction in POMC expression. In addition, they had a reduction in leptin-induced depolarization of POMC neurons. Okay, so in summary, the coactivator SRC1 interacts with PSTAT3 to modulate POMC expression and neuronal activity. These effects enhance the ability of leptin to induce suppression of appetite in the fed state, and disruption of these mechanisms may explain the weight gain and indeed other clinical features seen in patients. Broadly, the modulation of this mechanism may represent a useful therapeutic strategy for weight loss, but specifically for these patients in whom a deficiency of POMC may explain their obesity phenotype, possibly increasing POMC signaling with an agonist, for example, could be effective. And in fact, we're currently running two trials in patients with genetic forms of obesity using a new drug called setmelanotide, which is an MC4R agonist. And so we hope that given this evidence, um, these patients could now be enrolled in similar trials in the near future. Thank you. Thank you. Quest questions for Tessa. If you put your hand up, somebody will come to you with a mic. Oh, John. Did you personally make the knock-in mouse? 
the, the knock and mouse was made by our collaborators in Houston. What, 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 what was the rationale for selecting that particular knock-in? So this particular variant had the most severe loss of function in cells, so that was the reason for selecting it. Edwin? So, so how certain are you that this effect is purely through appetite and food intake and not other effects? Yes, absolutely. Um, so you, I think in the mice, um, because the deletion was targeted to POMC neurons, that's why they had reduced food intake. But in the global deletion, they also saw uh, changes in en energy expenditure. In humans, we've only seen differences in food intake, but when we measured energy expenditure through indirect calorimetry, there was no difference from the predicted. So in humans, at least, it's unlikely to be due to changes in energy expenditure. Okay, last question. Anna? So is the new drug that you showed is in two clinical trials now, does it affect selectively your target or is there some vagueness about this? Yes, yeah, so the drug selects the melancortin-4 receptor, which is the direct um, target of the POMC cleavage products. Previous MC4 are agonists the problem with them has been high blood pressure and many off-target effects, which don't seem to be the case in these patients. Um, so it's promising that it's a more selective target for MC4R without additional um, effects on MC1, for example. I think we'll probably have to stop. Obviously, lots of questions and answers, and, and well done on your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much.